Okay, I thought I'd have a bit of fun today. Um, <coughs> what you're looking at here is an experiment I've been doing for about three years. Um, a few people mentioned it's hard sometimes to develop things when you're at school, but what you can do is just try a little bit each year and build the idea up. So this is something I've been building up for a little while. Um, this is Minecraft. If you don't know what Minecraft is, think digital Lego. Okay, so here's a little space that I've been building recently. 20 million copies of this game. It's incredibly popular. Um, for about $25 you get unlimited gameplay for years. Years of excitement. Um, this is me here building a very special tower at the centre of the universe, 000. I like to build a structure at 000 in the Minecraft world. Um, lots of people have got onto the bandwagon. There's now a thing called Minecraft EDU, which is trying to actually find a structure to bring this into classrooms. Um, I was pretty sceptical, I have to admit. I heard a lot of Minecraft stuff and I thought, yeah, it looks good. I had a look at it, but I had to ask myself, is it actually really any good for quality stage four mathematics? And originally I thought not, until I discovered this. So that is a Mandelbrot set that's been built in Minecraft. It's actually computed within Minecraft. And one of my students said, hey sir, those 3D graphs you've been talking us about, you do realise you can make them in Minecraft. <laughs> and so I found this video on YouTube. You'll notice um, that he has 1.9 million subscribers. This thing is huge. So it doesn't take long exploring on YouTube in particular to find things to get lots of really good ideas about what you can do. Alright, so in 2014, my starting place when I was teaching Cartesian geometry, uh, Cartesian coordinates to year 7, I very quickly liked to go from XY to XYZ, because uh, kids find that much more interesting in 3D than in 2D. Um, but the wonderful thing about Minecraft is the coordinate system's different. And many of your kids who are playing Minecraft are already familiar with the coordinate system in Minecraft. So this is a nice place to actually talk about different coordinate systems and does it matter if X and Y are different? Um, I got pretty carried away. Oh, what's happening here? I got pretty carried away. <laughs> <laughs> I got pretty carried away when I realised that Minecraft, because it's essentially a 2D geometry when you look at it from above and things are restricted on a grid, it links into a type of geometry called taxicab geometry something I would recommend you look up. And I actually exploited this to build a question in a year seven assessment task where they had to look, that's a circle at the top by the way, that's what a circle looks like in taxicab geometry. And the end result of the question was to discover that in taxicab world pi is equal to four. Um, the net consequence I had of putting this in an assessment task is kids went, uh, the principal came up to me a day later <laughs> and said, I love what you did in your assessment task the kids came to me and said, I never want to play Minecraft again. <laughs> and I thought, oh, maybe I've done this the wrong way. <laughs> okay, so in an enrichment topic at the end of year seven in 2015, where I wanted the kids to explore fractals, I myself spent about two weeks building manga sponges <laughs> in Minecraft. And the kids were found this stuff really interesting. So there's some very rich opportunities uh, to explore <coughs> fractals in this world. Um, but the most fun I've had has actually been this year. We teach a unit um, on sets and Venn diagrams and some logic in there. With an electronics background, I like to take it into this place um, because it's about now we have a talk about calculators, what are calculators, how do they actually work? Well, this abstract stuff we're doing is what powers your calculator. Well, it turns out, and so we do a bit of binary and we do some of this stuff, it turns out um, this is what you would do in a non-Minecraft way. You would use something like this to start building these machines. But in Minecraft, you can do logic circuits. And so this slide shot here is actually from one of my students this year, who's built, uh, I think that's an AND gate they've built there, and they've built a sequence of other gates. Um, here's one boy's homework. He's built every single different logic gate at the bottom there. And one of my students, you can see his picture there down in the corner, spent about four hours making videos for the rest of the class how to build each of these gates. So he's built like a three or four minute video on every gate, how it's built and how it operates. 
So the kids are absolutely really having a wonderful time with it. So where else could you go? Um, one thing I love, it's, a, it's a quite an OCD type activity. You can <laughs> farm for things. So you can farm for chickens, farm for cows and so on. There are different strategies to do it. You can feed them, you can breed them. And there's some very complex modelling that I think could be done with this as to what the optimum strategies are for doing it. And I think that could actually be a year 9 or year 10 activity. Um, the biomes or the, um, the way the areas are set up, this represents like forests and deserts and ice areas. They're all generated by a random number generator. It starts off with a seed and there's some very complex mathematics to work out how to generate these biomes. And um, that's something that I want to explore later. I think it's a year 9 or 10 project how these generators actually work. Um, underneath the bottom of the world in Minecraft is this very scary place called the Netherworld which you enter through a portal <laughs> and it really is very scary um, but it's got an interesting mapping the dimensions in the normal world are different from the dimensions in the Netherworld and so eight blocks in the normal world corresponds to one block in the Netherworld and you use it as a portal to go backwards and forwards and there's some interesting links about when that works and when it doesn't work due to the mechanics of the portals I suspect there's a year 9 or 10 project when you're doing either functions or um, coordinate systems. Okay, what do the students think? The students get very, very, very excited. Many are surprised how much maths is in their favourite game. The biggest problem you'll have is they like it too much. Yeah, they will end up doing nothing but their maths homework. <laughs> um, reactions from parents. It does take a bit of convincing that it's quality learning because they know it's a game. Um, but they will be very impressed how much work the kids are doing. Um, I would encourage you, if you're going to do this experiment, encourage the kids to actually show their work to their parents. Don't do it on your own in your bedroom. Actually show your parents what you're building and explain it to them. And the parents will see as it's being explained that they are doing real work. Some practicalities, I'm lucky at my school, we've got the infrastructure of laptops, Wi-Fi and Edmodo already in place. That makes a big difference. Um, definitely encourage students to produce tangible output, otherwise they'll just play. You want to see what they've built. You want them to take snapshots, make a poster, do something with it. You do need alternatives. You can't say Minecraft's the only way to do it. So for example, you saw the Enrich thing with the logic circuits. I gave the kids two choice choices, you can do your logic circuits in the Enrich tool or you could do it in Minecraft. Um, I'm not quite at using Minecraft EDU stage, I'm not quite ready to do that so we're just doing uh, do it yourself for the kids. If you want to do it, uh, if you want to bring this into your class you're going to need to spend a little bit of time exploring it, it'll cost you $25 to start up um, and your students will love teaching you. So the question is, can we leverage Minecraft for high quality stage 4 outcomes? I actually think there's stage 6 outcomes that can be covered in Minecraft. So play and have fun, I would encourage you. Thank you.